and you lay down some traps and you hold off hordes of enemies and some story happens and you move to the next position and do it all over again and that's basically from beginning to end with the exception of boss fights that's literally all it is over and over and over again until the game's over so it's just it's just not as fun as it was with the previous games Here I try to go to this tower again. It's like, return to the mission. I'm like, ah, I, I hate this shit. I really do. It drives me up the wall. I, I enjoy playing this game, but, but this thing that so many games does where it's like, you're leaving the area, make sure you return to the area, just drives me up the fucking wall. Let me explore, damn it. Uh, uh, and I haven't played Gears of War 4 or 5. I heard 5 went woke, which is just disappointing to hear because if there's any series that deserves to uh, just soak in its own masculinity, it's fucking Gears of War. You know what I mean? And sh Gears of War is a series that should absolutely... De well, nothing should go woke because yeah. everything woke turns to shit. But... Uh, It's just disappointing to hear that that happened to Gears of War. It's happened to so, so many games and so many franchises and series and shit like that. This generation. That's one of the numerous problems with this generation. If you're interested in hearing me talk about the problems with this generation of consoles, you can go and read about it. You can go and listen to my friend Sam Valentine and I talk about it on episode 123 of the Press the Action Button podcast. That was a lot of fun to record. I'm looking forward to recording another one soon with Eric, who usually does it with me. Speaking of Sam, he does a uh, podcast called uh, This Guy Are Sick where he just talks about video games or anything else that currently interests him. Um, he just talks about video games or anything else that currently interests him. Anything he wants to on it. it Obviously, the name comes from Final Fantasy VII. There was a, and there was a rather infamous, rather well-known uh, grammatical error in Final Fantasy VII. Where uh, Aerith said. Uh, pointed at a guy that was sick in the slums and said this guy are sick instead of this guy is sick. It was corrected in later versions of it, but the original version on the PlayStation 1 has that translation error. And that's where he got the name for it. And he spun that off into a, ra a radio show that he does a couple times a week where he just talks about 30 minutes and plays music called... Uh, TGAS Radio. And I would recommend going and checking that out. He's pretty he's a pretty cool guy, a good friend of mine. How dare you shoot arrows at me, prick? But, uh, I recently, uh, told him, you know what, I'm just gonna rip off your idea here. I'm just gonna take your idea, uh, TGAS Radio, and just flat out rip it off. And, cause I wanna do a show where I share my, where I share my own taste in music. 
because uh, music is very, very important to me. I listen to a lot of fucking music. Mostly heavy metal. So that's most of what you'll hear on this. But uh, I recorded a test episode, uh, and it's me talking about my history as a creator, and then I uploaded it to BitChute as an exclusive there. And this is something that I don't want to use Spotify's library of music to piece this together. Because I want to pick from my collection of uh, demos as well as some, and those demos aren't up on Spotify. I can't do that if it's, if I just have to use Spotify. So I would rather just insert the music myself. And that's what I did on this first episode. And if people like it, generally, I want to. Uh, If people generally like it, I want to uh, try to set up an RSS feed so that I can do it at least somewhat regularly and host it on Spotify for people to listen to and listen to me talk and about whatever I feel like talking about. Should be It should be fun, and I would enjoy doing it, sharing my music with you, so I will leave a link in the description below if you guys want to give that a listen. That was a lot of fun to piece together. It didn't take that long, really. I mean, it's about 30 minutes of me talking and about 37 minutes of music. It was fun to do. I enjoyed it a lot. And I think that's pretty cool, and I... And if you guys want to, if you guys are interested, I will uh, once again leave a link in the description below for you guys to go listen to that. It was a lot of fun. Pretty cool. Uh, speaking of pre the actual podcast, press the action button. I set up a archive on here on YouTube because uh, here's what here's the way I originally hosted press the action button and I talk about this on the radio show that I recorded but uh Amita I got the intel okay I didn't I was listening to a bunch of different podcasts in like 2008, 2009, I was listening to Invisible Walls on GameTrailers.com, a spinoff of GameTrailers.com called uh, Epic Battle Cry with Daniel Kaiser and a couple of his friends that are metalheads like him talking about video game news. And I was listening to uh, Screw Attack's weekly podcast called Side Scrollers, you know. Bunch of different things, and I thought it sounded like a lot of fun. I thought this this sounds like something I could do. This sounds like something I would enjoy doing. So I didn't know anything about how to how to uh, properly set up a podcast, host it, things like that. So instead, my dad told me that he had um, some uh, online space that he could let me use to host it up there. So what I did was I set up I set up a uh, podcast. I set up a website called Digital Delirium. That's where the name originated. Well, that's not where the name originally came from. I'll explain that in a little bit. But I set up a website called Digital Delirium that was going to just... Any video, any uh, text reviews of video games that I wrote would go up there. I would host, I would post new, um, news up there for video games on a regular basis. I would, uh, there was no commentary. It was just a quick blurb about whatever the news for that day was. That's it. Nothing else. Very simple. We had forums, we had the podcast, a whole bunch of different things. And the whole point of it was to host the podcast on. And the idea was to put the podcast up there. And then 
hopefully get people to go to the uh, website to give it a listen. And I couldn't tell you how many people actually did this. I had no way of keeping track of it. I built the entire fucking website in uh, Notepad. Not even kidding. It was all written out, handwritten out, and it was all written out in code. Shit. Ah. It's the most ghetto way of doing it ever, right? But that, but that was the way I did it. So, so I would upload the podcast to the website and then share out the link to the website and go, hey, there's a new podcast. Go check it out, you know, and try to get people to do that. And we would we eventually got to where we were uploading previews like one little one minute clips from from taken from the podcast uploaded to YouTube and we would have we would try to use that to redirect people to the website that did not work either so I, I imagine like very few people ever actually heard uh, heard our podcast back in the day nobody actually listened to it but that didn't stop us from making it. We made over a... We made, uh, obviously, the latest one was number 123, which... Well, we made it... We produced it regularly, basically, for four years. At least somewhat regularly for four years. Uh, and then I wound up moving... And since then, it's been sporadic. Just whenever Eric and I can sit down and record. You know what I mean? Nothing I... I mean, I want to do it more often, but... There's only so much I can do. When I at least partially depend upon other people to record and things like that. I w it's something I want to do more often because I enjoy doing it. The podcast is fun, sitting around talking about video games with my friend, you know? But, uh, because the Digital Delirium website is gone and has been gone for a while now, a whole shitload of episodes... Like, a hundred episodes of the podcast are not online at all anymore. And people can't go and back and listen to them. Not that many people would want to go back and listen to them, because it's all video game news ranging from, like, 2010 to 2014 or so. It's just us doing having roundtable discussions about video game news from that era. So why would somebody want to go and listen to 12-year-old video game news on a podcast? You know what I mean? But I thought that they should at least be online for people to listen to. So I set up an archive on uh, YouTube to host the old episodes and as soon as I get all the old episodes uploaded to that archive it will just go dormant because it'll have served its purpose all the old episodes every single episode will have been hosted online and new episodes will continue to be hosted here on the Doom Dog YouTube channel but if you guys are interested in that at all I will leave a link in the description below for you to go and check that out. Um, I think that with the original lineup of people that we had back in the day, we actually had some good chemistry and some good laughs and some interesting and funny conversations and things like that. It was a lot of fun to do. And if you're... If you want some good humor... If you want to stuff like that, you go 
and listen to those old episodes. I'm going to continue uploading one episode per day until all of them are back online. Uh, so, yeah, you can feel free to check that out if you're interested. I haven't listened to all of them, but I've, I've listened to parts of some of them, and I have personally enjoyed listening to them, but of course I was, you know, part of it. I was the host for all but one episode. One episode that happened to be recorded while I happened to be, uh, home. At the time, I lived in Pennsylvania, outside of Harrisburg. Uh, and I would fly home for, like, my birthday and Christmas, so there would be some times I just couldn't record, because I wasn't home for a couple weeks. And I, I only ever did this once, and I don't know why I only ever did it once, but I asked the guys to record an episode without me and I got a bunch of topics for them to discuss and just let them do it. And that was episode 14, Bubblegum and Bacon was the one that I was not on. Aside from that one single episode, I have been the host of every single one. Now, one of and one of the reasons that I want to try to get a the radio show off the ground and do some episodes of it is I want to learn how R to set up RSS feeds and learn how they work and shit like that. Because I want to set up an RSS feed to host the Press the Action Button podcast. And I have not decided... busy listening to the story there and then forgot what I was talking oh yeah um, one of the reasons I want to do get the radio show going off on the ground and everything is I want to um, I want to um, learn how to set up an RSS feed because I would like to start hosting the press the action button podcast on Spotify, see if we can't actually get people to listen to it and give a damn. You know what I mean? That could be fun to actually have listeners. Maybe I could get people to redirect over to the YouTube website and we can get over a thousand subscribers here for once. That would be kind of fun to actually have subscribers here on YouTube. I'm not holding my breath for that. But it's something I want to do. I want to get it so that... But when I do that, I have I have not decided if I should upload old episodes or not. I'll ask some of my friends what they think on that. It's old episodes where we're discussing video game news that goes far, as far back as 2010, right? So how much of an appeal is that actually going to have? But maybe some people would enjoy it. Like, maybe we can upload old episodes, mix it in with the, the new ones that we're recording or something. It's some, the, That podcast is something I want to do more of, and I want to do more of... Um, I want to do more of... Um, Uh, 
uh, film shoot. Which is our bit shoot exclusive review show for movies. And we do have an idea for our fifth episode of that. We will be talking about, just like we talked about what's wrong with the... Uh, Just like we were talking about what um, is wrong with the film in, with the gaming industry on episode 123 of the Press the Action Button podcast, we want to do an episode where we do the same basic thing except the film industry because uh, we shouldn't be relying on... Uh, like, releases on Netflix and... Uh, fucking superhero movies which people are going to get burnt out on and I think some of that's already taking place uh, to keep the whole fucking movie industry afloat damn it we shouldn't be relying on that something needs to change something needs to improve I don't want to see theaters go away. I don't want to see uh, the movie industry. I want to see it get better. And for the love of God, stop being woke. Stop making everything woke. Everything woke turns to shit. It's true. But yeah, we want to do that. Hope you guys are looking forward to that. I hope you guys have been well. I hope you guys are enjoying this these episodes of... Uh, God, I recorded way too much fucking gameplay. I recorded two and a half hours of gameplay, and I'm in 52 minutes into... into... Uh, recording commentary. So I still have over an hour and a half to go, and I'm already burnt, running out of the major things that I needed to discuss in this goddamn my big concern with hosting the uh, radio show is that it will um, that I'll get in copyright trouble over on Spotify by putting my own music in it. You know what I mean? I don't want to have to use Spotify's playlists and shit like that to fill it out, which is what Sam does. And there's nothing wrong with that. I just want to include like demos and shit that isn't on Spotify. You know what I mean? Yeah, I'm quite enjoying playing through this game. Going back to a time before the gaming industry was extremely fucking woke and everything was suffering as a direct result. Just just a good Far Cry game. <laughs> That's all we would. That's all we got with this was just I mean, it really in a lot of ways is just more Far Cry 3, but that's fine. Far Cry 3 is a good game, and this is a good game. I've thoroughly enjoyed the, uh... I don't know, approximately, uh... Five and a half hours of it that I've played. Still rather in the early goings, I guess, but I've thoroughly enjoyed playing it. Okay, let's check this. Nope, still going. Okay. Oh, 55 minutes in. Ugh. 
God, this is this was my big because like I, I could do an hour and a half easily. Doing two and a half hours is hard, even when it's even when I have things that I want to talk about ahead of time. Yeah, oh, fear, f fear two gets a bad rap. He will talk about fear two is nowhere near as good as fear one, which is honestly true, but. It's not really reason to throw Fear 2 out completely because it still does a lot of things well and it's still a decent little first person shooter. Uh, the weird thing is that the, the Fear, you, you know, the, the, the acronym, the, the, the First Encounter Assault Recon Team, that it was uh, central to the first game isn't in Fear 2 at all, which is just weird. Like the set, like the third one, sure, goes back to that because you play as Point Man again. But Fear 2 doesn't have First Encounter Assault Recon in it at all. Well, here's an interesting thought the, about uh, the Fear team. Why did Fear 2 and 3 need to be about Oma and Armacan and stuff like that? Why did we need to continue that storyline at all after Fear? I mean, you could have left it as uh, the expansions are canon and they wrap up the story if you wanted to, right? And then still did a sequel to it. And that sequel could be like fear, just the fear team dealing with another supernatural threat. You know, it doesn't have to be Alma. That that's what this, uh, it's what the fear team does. They deal with supernatural threats. So why why did every single game have to be about Alma? That's a that's also a good way to bring the series back if you really want to. Which I personally would love to see. Bring back fear. Fear is awesome. Give us more fear. Okay, so we got another quest to do, and I don't get around to that in the two and a half hours that I played through this. So maybe I'll get to that next time Dalton's on vacation. I don't know. But here I'm just doing the tower. But, yeah, like... You could have just had another game in the Fear franchise where you just deal with another supernatural threat. It didn't have to be Alba and Armacan and things like that. It could have been something else entirely. Which would have been a cool direction to take it, right? Like, just another story in the Fear universe. Why don't they ever think like that when they're making sequels and shit? Like, why does it have to carry over every aspect of the first game or movie or whatever in a sequel. Why can't it just be another story set in the universe? Especially if you establish a something like that where it's like this is not going to be the only thing that the Fear Team deals with, right? Surely they'll have other things that they have done that they do do. Besides uh this one thing. I mean, 